praise the Lord. The Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name today, Father. You are a good Father to us, Father. And we thank you, Jesus. Protect us from danger, seen and unseen, in the name of 
Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon each and every servant that is here on today, that you send forth your grace, send forth your help, send forth your strength in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you for all your grace and your mercy, your love and your kindness that you bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you because you woke us up this morning Amen. and you started us on our way. You've given us a mind to come out to the household of faith to worship you in spirit and in truth. And now, Lord, we ask you to take charge of our service. Bless each and every soul that is on the sound of our voice. And Lord, we praise you and give you glory and thanks and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As you remain standing, just want you to uh, turn with me uh, once again to the book of uh, Psalms, Psalms 133. Uh, this must be what we need to be praying for in these uh, given times because the Lord seems to have to keep going back to that particular Psalm, Psalm 133. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, there the Lord commanded a blessing even a life forevermore. I read your hearing Psalms 133, verses 1 through 3. Praise to you.
joy of the Lord is our strength. When the joy of the Lord becomes your strength, and you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So we want to welcome you today to another uh, praise and worship fellowship here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. I am the pastor, Bishop Frankie L. Quinn. We thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for the leadership here at this great church. And we also thank God for my lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn. Amen. Just wave your hand over there, honey. Mm -hmm. All right, you over there in the little land of Goshen. I call that the little land of Goshen. Amen. So we thank God for you. We thank God for our deacon, Deacon Daniels, and we praise our worship team. And we thank God for them. Amen. Amen. We certainly do thank God for you all pressing your way out on today. Amen. My brother-in-law, he's back again. Amen. Thank God for you. Brother Spencer Lutz. Amen. We thank God for him. And I'm going to call you a little fiance. Amen. We thank God for her as well. <laughs> he lifted up her hand. Amen. So we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. So as we uh, move along in our service on today, as I had mentioned even on uh, this morning at our 9, uh, 30, or was it 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. service, um, that we uh, are part of the 19 States Council, New York, New England, Pennsylvania States Council, and we're looking to have a virtual council on uh, July, July 17th and 18th. Um, so that will be Saturday, Friday and Saturday. So information will be coming forth and coming out. Uh, normally we would have, be having our gathering in June. Uh, so due to COVID-19 and all the restrictions, uh, we have to go virtual. And that's why it's a little delayed. But uh, I want to mention that to the saints of God, to the people of God, to stay tuned and go on Facebook. Zoom. So we'll be using uh, actually another platform. We'll be doing conference calling as well. So we have three means and three ways uh, to promote the services. So we want to uh, change the order of our service on today. Amen. And go into our giving and our offering time. Uh, and it's a time to be blessed. The Bible says it's more to get blessed to give than to receive. And God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So, um, right now, we want to go on prayer. Amen. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to bless this portion of our service. We ask you, Lord, to send forth your glory, send forth your anointing, send forth your strength. We ask you, Lord, to bless each and every soul that is about to sow seed into the kingdom. Use it for the building of your uh, glory of your kingdom. This we pray in Jesus' name. Be together. 
together and to worship God in spirit and in truth. But we certainly do, as we've been trained and we've been taught by the scriptures and the word of God to give thanks in all things. How many of you believe that today? Amen. Give thanks in all things, for it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we bow in humble submission <laughs> to the will of God. They usually say that, they usually say that at funerals. We bow in humble submission to uh, what God's will is. But we should bow in humble submission to everything that God allows to enter into our lives. And as the song said, it's intentional. God is intentional and he works for our good. And that, that there is a weapon of warfare. When you realize that no weapon formed against you, not anything that the enemy brings against you can destroy you. But God, he is faithful. How many of you know God is faithful? Hallelujah, God is faithful. He won't suffer anything to come upon you that you are unable to bear. So whatever you're going through right now, even now, even now, God, uh, he, he knows that you are able to bear it. Not that saying that God has brought it upon you, but if he has allowed it, you're able to bear it. Because God is just that kind of God. As the first song said, he's a good, good father. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Amen. In this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise him on today because he is our strength. He is our shield and he is our buckler. I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. If you can stand with me, as is our custom in reading uh, the Word of God. I pray that you pray for me and with me. Amen. Amen. As I pray for you and with you. Um, if you haven't said amen, First Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, drop down with me to verse 57. Verse 57. 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry. My fault. I said, did I say 1 Corinthians? Yeah. Okay, good. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 57. It says, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let us read that together. Can we read that together? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you and praise you for this opportunity to stand here before these great people behind this sacred desk. We ask you, Lord, that you sanctify our hearts and our minds, speak your word, that your most perfect will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. And as you remain seated at this time, and I just want to take a thought uh, that there is victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. And as we uh, were beginning to read this particular verses, verses 57 and 58, and I don't know if it hit your spirit or caught your attention, that at the end 
of verse 58 when it said, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor is not in vain. And then it says, in the Lord, in the Lord. And that's very key, that's very key because uh, we can be busy doing a lot of busy things that are good in and of itself, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's God ordained. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is the will of God. Uh, the Bible in Corinthians chapter uh, 13, that beautiful chapter, that love chapter, it talks about uh, if I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. If I, if I make myself a living sacrifice and I don't operate out of love, it is of no value. And I can have all mysteries and speak with excellency of tongues, but have not love, it profiteth me nothing. So everything that we do is to be done out of love. God is looking for us to do things out of love, to be motivated by love. Even the object of your faith, we all have a, a measure of faith that is given to us by God. And if God is not that object of faith that we uh, put our confidence in, then uh, we are like what we call, uh, 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 we ask and we pray amiss. If God is not my source, if God is not my uh, object of satisfaction, then my faith is in vain. And that's why a lot of people who put their confidence in man and put their trust in man fall because uh, when man falls, they fall. But if you put your confidence in God who is unmovable, who's unshakable, uh, you shall never fail. You shall never fail. Put your confidence in God means a great deal. That's why the scripture tells us, and it relates to us, that we are should be more than conquerors through Christ that strengthens us. God does not want you to go about your day or go about your existence without a, a mindset of being victorious. God does not want you to live in existence without doing great exploits or great works for his name. The Bible tells us that if any man be in Christ, he is a, a new creature. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If I if I if I were wanted to remain weak, I would have stayed out there in the world. If I wanted to may be less than nothing, I would have continued my life existence without God. Uh, but because I wanted to make a change, because there was something in me that said that there is something better. How many of you know that there is something better? Yeah. Hallelujah. Just living a mere life existence, doing nothing like a ship without a sail, that's not our calling. That's not our purpose. But God has a calling on our lives. God has a purpose for us, even in this particular hour. There's a lot of things that are going on in the world on today. There's a lot of struggles. There's a lot of ups and downs. There's a, a lot of fights. There's a lot of people getting killed, people getting shot. But God still has a plan. God still has something for you to do. As long as you're breathing, as long as there's life in your body, uh, that's a sign that God is with you, that God is with you. And if God be for you, uh, I stop by to tell you that who then can be against you? If God be for us, then who then can be against us? And so God, in his infinite wisdom, and in his majesty, and in his knowledge and understanding of who we are, 
God said in his word that he was going to make us in his image and in his likeness. In the image and the likeness of God, he made us male and female, created, the Bible says, he them. And what God did, God made you in his image and in his likeness, and he gave you a purpose. He put in you, in your life existence, a reason for living. A lot of us, a lot of us try to find out our life existence without God. A lot of us try to live a lifestyle without God and try to make our own happiness. But that's not the way God has designed things. That's not the way that God has put things together. In other words, God does not intend you to be happy without him. God does not intend you to be victorious without him. God does not intend you to expect you to have joy without him. God doesn't expect you to have peace without him. In other words, God wants to be with you uh, in everything that you do. Y'all remember when God was leading the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt and he sent Moses down there to tell the people, uh, to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Why did he tell them to let my people go? Because God has desired for them that he is saying it's time for you all to serve me. It's time for you all to worship me. It's time for you all to walk with me. It's time for you all to know who I am. And Moses said, Lord, if I go down and tell them that you want them to let them go, who shall I say that sent me? And all God said, just tell them I am that I am. I'm, I'm everything that they need. I, I'm everything that they can desire because I'm all that Ships, if you allow me to say it in that way, because we serve an awesome God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Uh, so when God told them to go down and to let my people go, God said to Moses that I'm going to go with you. Uh, I'm not going to send you by yourself. Then he said, I'm fat. I'm going to go before you and prepare the way. You see, brothers and sisters, when God is in the mix, when God makes up his mind to dwell in our lives, he goes before us. When God decides that, that we, hallelujah, he's setting his affection upon us, he'll go before us to prepare the way. God will be with us. And God, when he led those people out of the wilderness, the Bible says that he was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God fed them matter in the wilderness. My God and God gave them clothes and shoes that would not wear out because God was with them. And then God anointed a rock. Uh, and the Bible says that that rock was Jesus. Uh, God built an anointed a rock uh, to give them water in the wilderness. Uh, throughout their wilderness experience, uh, God was with him. My, my God, I feel like talking to you today. Who am I talking to today? Somebody need to know that God is with me. That God said in his word that he'll never leave you, nor he'll never forsake you. He'll be with you wherever you go. But sometimes we like to linger around. And that's what the children of Israel did. They lingered around. It was God that caused them to go into that wilderness experience. God wants you sometimes to go through a wilderness experience. It's in your wilderness experience where you can learn how to worship your God. It's in the wilderness experience uh, where you can learn how to pray, how to read the word of God, how to fast, and to get rid of the world. When God led the children through the wilderness, their wilderness 
Joseph's experience uh, was only supposed to last 11 days. Uh, and then after their 11 day periods, uh, they were supposed to go into the land of Canaan. Uh, but they got hard. They got stiff neck, And they got rebellious. And that prolonged their wilderness experience. My brothers and sisters, my sisters and brothers, if you've been in a wilderness experience and it's coming to your mind that I've been in this experience a little too long, that I'm going through what I'm going through, it's been past due. I think that I should have been delivered out of this experience a long time ago. But let me tell you something. If you're having those thoughts, you need to sit down with yourself and with God and examine yourself. The Bible says let a man examine himself to see whether or not he's walking or she's walking in the faith. It's not that God can't deliver you, but God is waiting. Somebody say God is waiting. God is waiting for you to make a turn. God is waiting for you to give him the glory. To you to surrender your life. To you to turn over your life unto him. Because he wants to make something special out of your life. It's not the way you want it. My God, but it's always on God's time. Somebody say God's time. Uh, God's time. You see, we operate in chrono time. Uh, we operate on a 24-hour period uh, when we want things done. But God, somebody say, but God, I feel like I need y'all to help me preach up in here. But God. God operates on his time. Uh, God operates on his time. And God's time is his time. You can be a God short and a day late. But the God always, always be right on time. We say it like this. He may not come when you want him. But he's always right on time. That's God time. God knows when it's time for you to be set free. God knows when it's time to elevate you. God knows when it's time to bring you out of darkness. To cause you to walk in his marvelous light. God knows when it's time to set the captives free. That's trying to hold and God knows, my God, God knows how to deliver all the ungodly out of every ungodly circumstance and condition. And when he brings them out, God brings them out more than a conqueror. God brings them out more than a deliverer. God brings them out, oh my God, to cause you to worship him. Spirit and in truth. Oh my God, I feel like preaching up in here. Y'all remember the Apostle Saul, but he formerly was known as the Apostle Paul. Oh my God, he was one that was a terror before he got saved. Before he, oh my God, came to know Jesus. The Bible said that he slaughtered the saints. The Bible says that he persecuted the saints. He wanted to throw them in jail. Uh, he wanted to do them much harm. He was consenting even to the death of Stephen. My God, he wanted the people to know, ah, oh my God in heaven, uh, that there was, my God, that there was something in him. That wanted, uh, he was working toward destroying uh, that which God was trying to build up. Uh, but Paul uh, had his faith in the beginning uh, in 
doing something that was not what God wanted him to do. That's like you and I sometimes. Sometimes we put our faith in things that we think is good. We put our faith in things sometimes when we think is all right, but it's all wrong. It's not related. It's not connected unto God. And that's what Saul was doing. He was trying to live a righteous life by the works of the law, trying to do what he thought was what God required. Oh, I feel a word of sermon coming on. You can't give God what you want to give. You got to give him what he desires. You got to give him what he's looking for. And what Saul messed up, he thought he was serving God when he was doing it all wrong. And Jesus met him on the road to Damascus. Y'all bear with me just for a little while. We gonna get there in a moment. He was trying to serve God in his own might, in his own strength, by his own knowledge, through his own wisdom. You can't serve God through your own might, through your own wisdom, through your own ability. Because when things get said and done, you say, look what I've done. And not give God the glory. When everything goes smooth, you say, I did this. And not give God the glory. I hear Jesus saying, let your light shine before me. That they may see your good works and then glorify your Father which is in heaven. You gotta give glory to God. You gotta worship your God and magnify his name because you've been bought with a price and you are not your own. Jesus paid the price, he gave his life as a ransom for you and I. So that we can give glory unto God. Clap your hands and give God a praise. My God, I see when Paul was on his way to Damascus because he had letters wanting to persecute the saints. My God, but then he met up with Jesus. Notice this, brothers and sisters, that Paul. Jesus, uh, 
It's not in your ability, but it's in 
things, all things through Christ that strengthens you. Come on and give God a praise. That's why Paul said, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why I said that the object of your faith must be Jesus. Why? Because that's where the victory is. That's where your joy is. That's where your peace is. Jesus said this, very powerful words. When he asked the disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? They were confused, except for Peter. Peter said that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He wants to reveal himself to you as the Christ, the son of the living God. Then he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We are his church. Yes, we, are. we are his ecclesia that he has called out so that we can walk in the victory that Jesus gave for us. Yeah. He was the one. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That died for us. Yeah. Yeah. My God. You know, I think about a lot of, there's a lot of people that try to rule over us, isn't there? Yeah. There's a lot of people that try to kick us around. Amen. Tell us we ain't no good. Am I right? Even sometimes your own thoughts will try to invade your mind and tell you you're no good. Ah, yeah. oh, but I'm so glad. Hallelujah that Jesus paid the price. Yeah. I'm so glad that Jesus, hey, hallelujah. He said, let this mind be in you. Yeah. Which is also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, Victory is in Jesus. Deliverance is in Jesus. And when we realize that and turn our hearts to Jesus. And you know what? Sometimes you can lose focus. You can be walking with the Lord and then lose focus. But if you turn your heart back to him, he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's, oh, you got a prison on me. Open arms. Open arms. Say, come unto me. All oh, you that labor and the heavy labor. He said, I will give thee rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. What I love about Jesus, I'm in my clothes. What I love about Jesus is, is it doesn't matter what you've done. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you've said. There's still room at the cross for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's not God's will. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's not God's will that anybody should perish. God doesn't want to see us die. God doesn't want to see us losing. He wants us to be more than kind. Hallelujah. Just think about it in this respect. If you had a gift for your son, for your daughter, or for somebody, you get pleasure out of the music every day. You get joy out of the music every day. Same way with God. When you call on his son Jesus, God gets pleasure out of your use of him. Amen? There's a, a lady at work. She had given me a cup. It was a specialty cup. That it was one of the cups that kept the stuff hot or cold all day long, depending on what you put in it. And, and, and she gave it to me. She said, Frank, you've been using that cup I said, oh, no, that's a special cup. Oh, 
all use it on special occasions. I got that cup put up. And you should have seen the look she had on her face. Like, I, I didn't give you that cup to put it up. I gave you that cup to use it. From that point on, I started using that cup. Amen? And I told her specifically, I'm using the cup. And she got all excited, uh, happy in the face, because I was using that which she gave unto me. Same way, if she got that kind of experience out of a cup, how much more will God feel when you use his son, Jesus Christ? To become the sons of God. There's victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. If you want to be victorious. Not in your own power. Not in your own might. But be victorious. In the power. In the might of Jesus. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Hey, hallelujah. You might just stand to your feet. And just worship him. Just for a moment. Hallelujah, just give him a praise. Say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. I thank you, Lord, for starting me on my way. Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, forgive me for all of my sins. Lord, forgive me for all of my waywardness. Lord, I trust you. Come on, give him all the praise. Let him go, Lord, I trust you. You are my strength. You are my life. You are my salvation. I trust you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And if there's anyone that want to get baptized in Jesus' name on today, we got water, we got clothes, amen. We can baptize you in Jesus' name. All you have to do is just raise your hand. My God. And I'm going to pray for each and every one of you on today. And I thank God that you came out. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the word. Uh, I hope you enjoyed I'm going to say it like this. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed preaching it. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. My God. God is good, isn't he? I say God is good, isn't he? Yeah, hallelujah. And know this, beloved, that you are more than conquerors. That God is with you. Uh, that God will never forsake you. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this word on today. We thank you for the anointing that we feel right now. Lord, we pray that you strengthen each and every servant under the sound of my voice. We ask you, Lord, that you sanctify us holy, deliver us and strengthen us by your power and by your might. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, to him be glory both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.